Thank you so much, C. Uh, it's a pleasure to be here. I love Monday mornings. And today we are in space. And the word that comes to my mind is perseverance. That's the uh, character strength we're going to discuss on uh, Wednesday. And when I'm thinking about this group and the work we're doing together, I'm thinking perseverance. We started this in the middle of a, a global pandemic. And we are continuing week after week after week. And some days, we are awesome, some days, some days not so much, and yet we continue. To me, that is um, perseverance in action. The mantra that I've chosen to work with today is um, you release limitation and open to infinite possibility, or rather I release limitation and open to infinite possibility. That's a big one. And space, in space, we completely surrender because we trust. That's another thing with perseverance. When I read that chapter, um, and uh, when we, in each other, we're looking, one of the main things we're looking for is trust. Can I trust you? Um, and same thing, can I trust life? Can I trust the universe? Can I trust that this is going to end well? So, yeah, that's, uh, and in, in space, we, we float. We are no longer... Uh, grounded in earth, so we are floating in space. Shivasana is the hardest post of, of, of all. You're completely releasing and surrendering to what is, knowing that it ends well or whatever, like, yeah, it's tricky. So here we are practicing. Uh, okay, so let's get started. We're starting with the uh, chair practice and then we do the guided meditation. Space element, so it's earth, water, fire, air, space. Um, the color is blue, throat chakra, speaking my truth. Okay. Um, sense of hearing and all the other senses, but mainly hearing. So we're gonna start with a little uh, breathing exercise. So it, my teacher talks about that like six limbs. Six, and we have, we have two legs, two arms, head and tail. That's, that's uh, yeah. So you could, if you wanted to, you could think about yourself as a six limbed creature. Two legs, two arms, head and tail. Our tail is short, but it still exists, it's there. We can actually wiggle the tail or wag the tail. Then if you wanted to, you could find your navel. That's the first part where we, where, where we actually took in food. So when we were still connect, physically connected to our, our mother, that's how we got uh, nourishment. So if you wanted to, you could think about the navel as a mouth where you take in nourishment. In yoga, we talk about life force and prana. So um, you could play with the idea that the life force comes in that's what keeps you alive and uh, comes in through your navel. So you could inhale in through the navel and then exhale out through the six limbs. So if you wanted, you could, you could, if you wanted to play, uh, maybe close your eyes and then maybe breathe into the navel area. And then exhale out through the six limbs. Legs, arms, head and tail. Inhale, inhale through the navel. Exhale out through your six limbs. And then just try that a few times. Inhale through the navel. Exhale out through limbs. I like to put my hand on my navel to help myself find that place. And then whenever you're ready, come open your eyes, come back to earth, uh, check in um, the ground with your feet, hands on your knees, sitting up tall, sit bones are securely attached to your chair. You sit sitting up tall, pit of the belly goes in and up. 
maybe lift the shoulders a few times, release them down, neck is tall. You could imagine that you have like a magnet on top of your head that's suspending you from space. So there are two forces, one force hold gravity holding you on earth and another uh, force suspending you uh, from space. And then bringing your awareness to your uh, spine. So the, all the vertebras, the um, sacrum and the tailbone, that entire thing is the spine. Exhale and round your spine. Inhale, coming into a slight back bend. Exhale, round. Inhale, um, back bending. So cat cowing. And notice the wave like motion in your body. And then coming back to neutral, uh, place your hands, like, let's do them out wide today. So reaching out wide, reach out wide, and then gently twisting from side to side. So this is fire, finding the part of, this, of, this, of the mid core, the part of the spine or the core that's like in your middle, solar plexus, mid core. Reaching out, like drawing the outer lines of a circle with your fingers. Gently twisting from side to side. You could let the head go with, turning gently, looking at your fingers. And then when you're ready, start swimming. So moving up with the shoulders a little bit more. And then go backwards. Okay, lift the shoulders, release them down, lift and release them down. Now, imagine that your head is on top of the spine. So if, when I wanna lean my head one side, I wanna bring it up and over. Opposite arm goes heavy, opening up, opening up that left side in your body. If you are leaning the way I'm leaning. And then inhale and bring the head up and put it back on again. And then try the other side, lift the head up, bring it over to one side. The opposite arm is heavy, opening up this side of the body. And then lift the head back up and place it on top, finding neutral. Okay, now, Take your thumb and just look at the thumb and draw a big circle, big circle, big circle, big circle around. Let's do that a few more times, two more times. Looking at my thumb, drawing a big circle. And then back to my knees. And then try the other side, look at the left thumb and draw a big circle, big circle. Circle of life, maybe. Lion King, I like the Lion King and the music there. And then coming back to neutral. Okay, now bring your feet together to Tadasana feet, big toes to touch, heels slightly apart. And we're gonna do that sequence we do every week. So uh, lifting that right knee up, making circles. Opening up that hip and then finding a seated pigeon. If you want to, you can bring the fingers in between your toes to open up all the, all the like energy channels there in your feet. I use my right elbow to gently push that knee out a little bit. Sitting up tall, maybe leaning forward. This is water element, opening up the hips, emotions. We store a lot of memories in our hips. So sometimes when we open up the hips, we start crying. 
or uh, we remember things and then we can process it, let it learn from it and let it go. Okay, slide the knees together. Um, bring your arms up. Exhale and turn away from those, uh, from that knee. Looking over your shoulder. Look behind you. What can we learn from this past year? What did we learn in the pandemic? And how can we do things differently in the future? To create even better lives. And then come back. Uh, I have my right leg on top, the right arm goes under, I give myself a hug. Notice the lungs behind me on the back body. And then finding eagle arms. And then whenever I'm ready, let that bird fly. Big, big bird out in the space. Infinite, infinite possibility. And then come back to neutral. Try the other side. That left knee goes uh, up. Circle around. Finding seated pigeon. Maybe place the fingers in between the toes to help open up. Maybe using the elbow to gently, not forcing, but gently inspire that knee to go out a little bit wider. Breathe into the resistance you feel in your body. Be curious about it. What is going on there? What is it that I don't see yet? How can I proceed um, in a good way? Skillful action. We talk about skillful action in yoga. We can always take action. Um, when it's skillful, it's better. And then sliding the knees together, inhale, arms up. Exhale, a twist to the opposite side of that knee to create balance. We're always looking for balance. Maybe look behind you. And then release or come back. Uh, left arm goes under, give yourself a hug, gently rocking from side to side. I love myself so much. World peace starts with me. I need to create peace in me first. And then if you want to, you can create peace in you. And then we have world peace, super simple at least in theory. Move into eagle arms if that's what you want. And then let that bird fly. I release limitations and open to infinite possibility. Okay, we're gonna do um, a high lunge seated on the chair. So go to one side, I'm choosing the right side. Hips are facing forward my toes are on the floor behind me opening up that hip flexor holding on to the chair for support so everything is facing forward and then I can bring that foot back foot back as far as I like to open up the hip flexor Pita the belly goes in and up bring that right arm up lengthen the right side of the body and then uh, put the fingers on your head Think about the elbow and then bring that elbow up and over, up and over. So a slight leaning to the left, opening the right side of the body. Breathe into it. And release. From here, we're gonna to move to warrior two. So this pelvic half, open up that pelvic half, come off the the chair, you can, you, if you want, you can be seated or you can come off the chair and just hold the chair there if you need it. And then open the arms wide. Imagine that you have crayons in your fingertips and then paint a big circle, painting a big circle.
coming back to warrior two, both hands on your legs. Put that right hand on your hip. Think about the elbow. Now, straighten the front knee, gently sliding into Trikonasana. The right elbow is pointing up. And then rebind the front knee, coming back to warrior two for a moment. All right, sit back down on the chair, facing it sideways. Now, think about the navel again. Inhale into the navel, be small like a seed. Exhale, open up. Inhale like a seed, exhale, open up. You can let go of maybe one arm, maybe both arms, maybe no arms. Maybe you don't want to do that. Maybe you do this with one leg. Inhale to a seat, exhale, open up. Okay, let's try the other side. Sliding over to my left side of my chair, prepping or setting up for high lunge. So I have my, the heel is off the floor, just the toes are there, open up the toes. So it's not warrior one. Hips are facing forward, open up that left hip flexor. I'm holding onto my chair so I'm not gonna fall off. I'm sitting on the, like the edge of the chair. Bringing that left arm up, open up the left side of my body. Placing the uh, fingertips on my head, bringing my awareness to the left elbow and then bring it up, reach up and over, up and over to open up that left side of the body. Okay, we're gonna move from here to warrior two. So I'm moving my feet slightly off, opening up the pelvic half, behind, the back pelvic half, finding my stand for warrior two. And then I'm leaving the chair. You can, if you want to, you can absolutely do this seated. Imagine colors. We have five fingers, so the five colors of the koshas. Imagine that they have all the colors and then drawing a big circle, big circle. How wide, how big can that circle be for you? Back to warrior two, we're gonna move into Trikonasana. Both hands on your legs to start with. That back hand, put it on your hip. Think about that elbow. It's pointing somewhere. Okay, now the front leg, straighten the front leg and let that hand slide down for support. You can also hold the hand on that chair. And then decide how far do you wanna go? If you go too far, just come back up up again. It's okay to go a little bit too far and then just back up. Think about that, el that top elbow. Where is it pointing? Maybe you want to look up. And then uh, rebending the front knee, finding warrior two again. Okay, find the chair behind you, sit back sideways, find the navel, inhale, exhale, open up. Inhale to a little seed, exhale, open up. Inhale to a little ball, find a little seed, and then exhale and open up. Okay, let's come back. Um, to neutral, feet on the ground. We're gonna stand up, we're gonna do 
uh, a couple of balancing poses and then camel. Okay, find the ground, getting ready to transfer your weight forward and up, forward and up, forward and up, forward and up. Okay, let's turn towards the chair. Stand pretty close. We're gonna do dancer. So the feet are together. Knees are together. Knees, yeah, so yeah, knees are together. Shift your, or transfer your weight into the left leg or one leg, I'm choosing my left. Now with my knees together, I release the back foot, the right foot back. I can keep the toes on the floor. This could be a start. Of course, you can do it on the other side of the chair and hold on to the chair if that's your preference. This is one version of the answer. Another one could be to take those toes off the floor. Maybe grab the ankle. Maybe bring that knee up. Maybe bring the, the hand up. So finding your version of dancer today. And then coming back to neutral, I'm gonna try the other side. Pour the weight into the right side of the body. Feel the stability there. That allows you to let the left leg float up. Maybe you keep the toes on the floor. Maybe you bring it up just for a moment, playing with balance. This can be done anywhere. You're waiting in the line to the library, maybe. This can be done anywhere. You don't need a special outfit. You can wear any color you like. You can be anywhere as long as you're standing. So finding your version of dancer today. Okay. Now we're gonna try eagle pose. And once again, we have done this. You can always do it on the other side of the chair if that's what you prefer. I'm just showing you other ways of doing it. Bend your knees, hold on to the back of the chair. Find the core. Now lift that right knee up high and place it on the, on the chair. Maybe this is it. Maybe this is where you wanna stay. Or you, want, or you can release the arms. Arms goes out. I have my right leg on top. My right arm goes under. I give myself a hug. Maybe bringing the arms up to eagle. And then letting that bird fly. Holding on to the back chair again. Bending both knees. Lifting the right knee up and down. Try the other side, bend both knees, lift the left knee up high, 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 place it on the chair. Maybe release the chair. Maybe give yourself a hug. We have done this seated many times. Maybe go for eagle arms. And then when you're ready, if you're ready, let the bird fly. Hold on to the back of the chair, bend both knees, lift the left knee and bring it down. Bend both knees and come back to standing. Okay, now we're gonna do a camel and child pose. We did that last week when we did uh, air and I just wanna do it again. I'm using a blanket and I'm having a bolster handy. So holding onto the chair, release the knees down, tuck the toes behind you, opens up the toes. Okay, one version, placing the hands in your back pocket, bring the elbows towards each, each other, open up that chest. Another version, Re look at that, um, ankle, no heel, look at the heel behind you, maybe touch that, that heel, pushing the 
the hips towards the chair. The hard part is not coming into camel, the hard, the, the hard part is getting out. So using my core to lengthen the spine and come up. Okay, try the other side. Look at that heel. Release the hand down, hips move towards the chair. Remembering that coming into the pose is easy, getting out is harder. I don't wanna go too far. I might mess up my back. Using the core, lengthen the spine, lengthen, lengthen, lengthen the spine and come back up. I could do this. This way too, looking at the, my thumb, look at that thumb, draw that big, big circle, big, big circle, big, big circle. Maybe I place the hand in my back pocket or maybe I place it on the heel. Uh, releasing the hips forward. Engage the core, lengthen the spine and come back up. Let's try the other side. Look at that thumb, drawing a big, big circle, big circle, maybe placing the hand in the back pocket, maybe touching that heel, pushing the hips towards the chair. And then release back up, all the way up. Okay, untuck the toes. And if you want to, you can use a bolster releasing the hips back towards the heels into child pose. If you have no issues with your knees, you don't need the bolster and <clears throat> you can sit back on your heels. For me, this depends on how much pickleball I've played. If I played too much, my knees are messed up. And then come back up, place the hands on the chair, tuck the toes, use the core, bend and push up to standing. Beautiful. And now let's go to the Nidra part. So getting ready for the, um, uh, the guided meditation, laying down, seated, you know what you like, you know what works for you. And as you know, this is a guided meditation. I take you or I guide you uh, on a journey. You do not have to follow me. You can listen and then you can say, thank you, but no, thank you. I'm gonna go somewhere else. If anything uh, is, uh, becomes uncomfortable, you go to your inner sanctuary. The inner sanctuary is something that we always have within us. It, it's there. And with practice, we can access that part of us more easily. It's always there. There's always a part of us that is calm and confident and that understands that we are whole and complete exactly as we are. And sometimes the rest of us just forget about that. And the mantra that I am use, I'm choosing to use or work with today, or sankalpa, that's another word for sankalpa, my heart's longing is, I release limitation and open to infinite possibility. Okay, so let's get started. Let your body sink down into the floor. Feel the earth underneath you, holding and supporting you, rising up to softly cradle you. At this time, nothing else matters. Nowhere to go, nothing to do. Remain still for deep nourishment. Repeat these words in your mind. I am awake and aware. I am awake 
and aware. Now, imagine yourself in a sacred place that feels peaceful and friendly, protected and supportive. It may be outside in nature, somewhere inside or an imaginary place. This is your inner sanctuary. Feel yourself here and begin to see all the details around you. The light, the colors, any objects. See yourself in this protected place, sensing the comforting energy, supportive, calm and protected. At any time during practice, you can guide yourself back here. If anything feels odd or too intense, go back to your inner sanctuary. Your inner sanctuary is always here. It is a part of who you are. Become aware of your upper body. Notice breath in your heart space. The easy rise and fall of breath in your chest. Now go inward. Deep inside and listen. Listen to your heart. Deep listening. What does it say? What is my heart's deepest longing? What does my heart desire? Your heart may speak in words, colors, songs, images, or something else. Allow your heart to speak its truth. From your heart's longing, create a positive statement in present tense as though it's already happening. Now, state your heart's wish three times to yourself as the truth. Bring awareness to your belly. Notice the expansion on the inhale and the soft release on the exhale. Navel rising on the inhale, yielding to earth on exhale. From your navel center, bring awareness to your lower belly, pelvis, right hip, right upper leg, knee, lower leg, ankle, top of the foot, sole of the foot. Feel whole right foot. Notice the right calf. Back of knee, hamstring, and pelvis. Notice your left hip, left upper leg, knee, lower leg, ankle, top of the foot, sole of the foot. Feel whole left foot. 
Notice the left calf. Back of knee, left hamstring, and pelvis. Bring awareness to lower belly. Navel center. Solar plexus. Lower ribs. Rib cage. Sense heart space. Heart center. Notice your throat center. Right shoulder, right upper arm, elbow, forearm, wrist, top of the hand, palm of the hand, center whole right hand. Bring awareness back to throat center. Notice your left shoulder, left upper arm, elbow, forearm, wrist, top of the hand, palm of the hand. And sense your whole left hand. Bring awareness back to throat center. Feel your neck, back of the head, crown of the head. Feel your forehead. Notice your mind's eye. Become aware of your eyes. Feel your eyes as color, as radiant wisdom, receiving sight. Bring awareness to nose. Notice breath passing through the nostrils, receiving smell. Shift your attention to your ears. Right ear, left ear, both ears. Notice the outer ear, inner ear, ear canal. Witness your ears hearing receiving sound. Notice your mouth. Notice taste in your mouth, receiving sensation. Become aware of the right side of the body. Now feel the left side of the body. Feel the back body, side of the body facing the ground, back body. And now feel front body, side of the body facing the sky, front body. Now feel right arm and left leg, right arm and left leg together.
Now feel left arm and right leg. Left arm and right leg together. Feel whole body now. All parts together. All together as a whole. Feel your whole body. Find the center of your body. Imagine inhaling in through your navel. Inhale into the center of your body. Now notice exhale. Allow the exhale to spread out through your body. Exhale goes into legs, arms, head and tail. Inhale into center. Exhale out into all the six points of your body star. Inhale through navel. Allow exhale to completely fill your body. Now imagine your body feeling contracted. All muscles and tissues pulling inward, inward flowing like a seed. Feel sensation of contraction in your body. And now feel the opposite. Feel your body expand, expanding, open, spacious, outward flowing. Feel the sensation of expansion. You sit on the floor with your eyes closed. Around you are voices and noises. It's distracting. Your ears are tired. This time you decide to lean into the sound. What lies beyond the buzzing? You find yourself in a dark tunnel. Your hands touch the wet surface around you. It's cold and humid. You hear muffled sounds around you. The air is clean and you breathe easily here. You look to the left. You look to the right. You look up. And you look down. It doesn't matter which way you go. 
they all lead to the same place. You start walking. Your bare feet know the way. Your mind's eye directs you in the darkness. You sense a change in the air. The tunnel is getting wider and drier. You slow down your pace, careful not to miss anything. Wind rustles your hair, shadows play on the ground. You can see the end of the tunnel. With a calm core and steady feet, you step all the way out on the ledge. Your eyes are getting used to the cool moonlight playing over the bare landscape. No houses, no people, no woods, no rivers. A dry and barren landscape as far as you can see. You lift your gaze. The dark sky seems lifeless. Yet, Something tells you to wait. Patiently you stay, careful not to disturb. From the corner of your eye, you notice movement. Slowly, you turn your head to see better. Something is crawling up from the dry dust. It comes closer, stops, waits, and looks at you. You stay still, careful not to scare the little creature away. You slow down your breathing, eager to show the six limbed creature that you have no intention to harm. It reaches out one of its six limbs to touch your big toe. It tickles a little. You smile. You bend down and offers your hand. Your new friend climbs into your palm. You lift it up. You blow off the dust. Still gray. You dip your shirt in water and offer some drops to the brave soul. Eagerly, it soaks it up. Deep inside its tiny body, you notice a light. With surprise, you watch the creature get bigger and brighter. The gray turns into a beautiful blue shade. 
the limbs change into delicate petals. Eventually, it floats off your hand. It stops midair and looks at you. You can hear it talking, but you don't understand the words. It falls silent, and then you hear a tiny little sparkling laughter. You smile and join the fun. It swirls around and waits for you to come. Without hesitation, you reach up and forward and float into space to follow your guide. Underneath you, the ground has become busy. Thousands of gray creatures are getting ready to launch. They yawn, stretch, and bend, brushing off their dusty limbs. One by one, they start to glow, transform, and float up into the air. There are more than you can count. They swirl around you, laughing and playing. You toss and turn with them. Just like blue stars, they beautify the dark space. You close your eyes and sense the intelligence of the universe. Your body relaxes. Your mind sees clearer now. It all makes sense. With clarity, you surrender. You sense the rhythmic breathing in you, in others, and in the universe itself. Together, you expand and release, expand and release. You release limitation and open to infinite possibility. Now remember your heart's longing. The positive statement you set at the beginning of practice. Repeat it three times to yourself as though it's already happening. Let this truth fill every cell of your body. Notice all the space around you. Sense the space within you. Feel the sense of calm confidence, whole and complete. Notice that part of you that is the witness. The one who has observed your body, breath and journey. And now begin to notice thoughts and feelings flowing through your awareness again. Notice your breath. Feel its rhythm and pace. Invite your breath to deepen now. Feel yourself reawakening. Become aware of your body, your physical body resting on earth. Before moving, just sense your hands. Now begin to wiggle your fingers. 
Notice your feet. Wiggle your toes. Gently rock your head from side to side. A slow awakening. Slowly roll to your left hand side. Press your hands into the floor and come up to a seated position. Lengthen your spine. Take a full breath in. Let it go. Bring your hands up in Anjali Mudra, holding your own heart in between your hands with love and compassion. I release limitation and open to infinite possibility. And gently bow your head in gratitude for this practice, thousands of years old. Thank you, inner guide, your past, present, and future teachers and all the people that are joining you on this journey. Allow the eyes to slowly open, raise your gaze, and thank you for joining me today. Namaste.